Hello happy crocheters, this is Lindsay from WindingRoadCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this fall inspired ear warmer. For this project I am using Red Heart with Love yarn. It is a worsted weight category weight number four yarn. I believe the color I'm using today is called Stone. We are also going to need a size H five millimeter crochet hook. I'm using the Clover Amour crochet hooks today and we're going to need a yarn needle and a pair of scissors. To get started we are going to make a slip knot but you want to make sure it's about eight to ten inches from your yarn end as we could use that for sewing later. We're going to insert our hook and begin chaining. Now I am going to chain 53 because I'm making a baby size ear warmer, but if you'd like to make a toddler size you can chain 59, a child size chain 62, for an adult size chain 68, and a large adult chain 71. I put the head measurements on the side of the screen for your convenience. Once your chain is complete, we're going to make something that I like to call the yarn over slip stitch. It is also referred to as the half double slip stitch and I will be working in the back loops of my chain, but of course you can work into the chain in whichever way is comfortable for you. This will be our finished edge, so I like to work in the back loops. To do this, we're going to yarn over our hook. We're going to go into the second chain from the hook, insert your hook, in my case into that back bump of the chain. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. I have three loops on my hook. What I'm going to do is pull that first loop through the second and third loop on my hook. Yarn over again, go into the next chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Pull the first loop through the second and third loop on your hook. We are going to continue working the yarn over slip stitch in every chain across. Your ending stitch count should be one less than your starting chain. When we reach the end of the row, we are simply going to chain one and turn and begin row two. For row two and row three, they're exactly the same. We're going to be working into the back loops of our stitch. So go down the center of your stitch and out the back so that you only have one loop over your hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through the two on your hook. So we're still working the yarn over slip stitch, but for this row and the next row, we're working in the back loops only. So yarn over, go under the back loop, and create your yarn over slip stitch. And just repeat this for every stitch across. When you reach the end of row two, we're going to chain one and turn. And just like row two, for row three, we're going to work the yarn over slip stitch in every stitch across, working in the back loops only. This is going to give us the nice ribbed look at the top and bottom of our ear warmer. Once we've completed row three, now we're going to go into that center stitch texture for our ear warmer. So we are going to chain one and turn. This row is also worked in the back loops only, but we will work our stitch pattern. So to do this, we're going to start in that first stitch, working in the back loops only, we're going to work one single crochet. Then going into the exact same stitch, we're going to work two more 
double crochets. So you'll have three stitches in the very first stitch. Single crochet, double crochet, double crochet. All worked in that first stitch. Now we are going to skip two stitches and repeat. Skip two stitches, working in the back loop only. We're going to single crochet, double crochet, and double crochet one more time. And then repeat. So to repeat, we are going to skip two stitches and then work the single crochet, double crochet, double crochet. Continue working this until you only have one stitch left at the end of your row after you complete your repeats. When you reach the end of the row, we're going to skip those last two stitches of our last repeat and then single crochet into the very last stitch. So really we only have one stitch left unworked because we skipped those two, but it will look like you have three stitches left at the end. So that is the first row of our texture. And now we're going to work a similar row for rows five through 10. So chain one and turn. In the first stitch, working as normal under both loops, we're gonna work a single crochet, followed by two double crochets in the same stitch. Then skip two stitches and repeat. So in that next stitch, we're going to single crochet and work two double crochets again in the same stitch. Skip two stitches and repeat. And you'll continue working this all the way until the end of the row where you will only have one stitch left over after you skip your last two stitches. When you reach the end of row five, skip those last two stitches and then single crochet in the very last stitch. Now all we need to do is repeat row five until we have a total of 10 rows. So we're gonna chain one and turn we're going to work a single crochet, two double crochets in that first stitch, and then skip two stitches. And so rows six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are all worked exactly like row five. So again, we're going to single crochet and work two double crochets into the next stitch, followed by skipping two stitches and then just repeat until you reach the end of the row and have one stitch left after your last two skipped stitches. And then you'll just single crochet into that last stitch. You will continue working until you have a total of 10 rows. So from the three on the bottom and seven rows of texture. Now we are going to add the bottom ribbing to the top of our project so that it's nice and even. We're going to chain one and work a yarn over slip stitch in the back loops only of every stitch across. So yarn over into the back loop only, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over pull through two loops on the hook to create a yarn over slip stitch and just continue working the yarn over slip stitch 
in the back loop only of each stitch across. When you reach the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn, and for rows 12 and 13, we're just going to repeat row 11. So again, work a yarn over slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across. Working in those back loops makes us look like we have almost this knit-like rib texture across the bottom and the top of our ear warmer. So repeat this row for row 12 and row 13. I'm sorry, I lost some video footage, but after row 13, all we're going to do is fasten off, leaving a really long yarn in, about 12 to 24 inches, and we're going to take our ear warmer and fold it in half as you see on the screen. We're going to take our yarn end and thread it through a needle, and if you find this is difficult, you can use a small piece of paper. You want to pick something that is going to fit through your needle after it's been folded over. And then all you would do is take your yarn end, place it inside that paper and fold the paper over the top of it, and then insert that into the yarn needle. And as the paper goes through the yarn needle, the yarn will go with it. I just happen to be using a smaller than normal yarn needle. So I thought I would show you the trick from here, all we're going to do is whip stitch our two ends together. I'm speeding this up just a little bit, but all we are doing is just whip stitching the two ends of our ear warmer together. Once you reach the bottom, what I just like to do is take my first yarn end and my second yarn end and just knot them together. Then we are going to gather up the center of our seam by pinching the seam three times. First in the center third, then in the bottom third, and then in the top third. This will create three nice easy folds. And then using that yarn and end and the yarn needle, we are just going to sew through all three folds trying to go back and forth at least four times and pulling as tight as you can because that's going to make that cinched area in the middle as small as we can get it. And once you work back and forth four times, I'm just going to knot it with the yarn end one more time. That just leaves it nice and secure. And then we can weave in our yarn ends. There's only two to weave in. So I'm going to flip my project over, move my yarn into the back of my work. And then when you weave in your yarn ends, you definitely want to make sure you want to go back and forth at least three times. Three times tends to be the magic number for being able to weave in your yarn in and being able to wash it in the washing machine without it unraveling. So I'm just going to snip that yarn in, weave in my other yarn in, and the project will be complete. So I hope you enjoyed this pattern and you were able to make it in whatever size you would like using the different starting chain amounts. And I hope you enjoyed the video tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. It really helps my channel.